Yeah. We about to do it. We about to do it. We about to go. We about to chill. Lockout men. That is me. I am back in the building once again with another podcast interview for you guys today. Man, if you guys see me in the same outfit, it's that I, I talk to these beautiful people the same day. That's how I do it. That, that's how you got to do it when you when, when you're doing this style like this. You know what I'm saying? You know, usually if you if you listening to me on my platform, my 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 podcast platforms, y'all not gonna tell what I got on anyway. Hell, I could probably be butt naked up in this bitch. You know what I'm saying? I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Well, I am here today with a uh, with, 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 with another female truck driver, women in trucking. Uh, this young lady. You know, she been in uh she been in the game for uh, for a couple of years. You know, doing the damn thing out here. You know, she's you know, she she had a hard upbringing. We we going to talk about that a little bit. You know what I'm saying? We going to talk about that a little bit. What's going on, guys? Lockout men. That's me. Thank you for coming. I really do appreciate it. You guys um well, if you want more, y'all know what to do. Like, subscribe, comment, share. Hit that bell on the way out the door. That bell and that subscribe button. Very important. Very important. If y'all want to come and get at me, you know how to do it. Get, uh, get at me at the Gmail. Get at me on the text. Get at me on the uh, Get at me on Instagram. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Y'all can get at me, though. But today, I would like to bring to the show... Red Duchess the Trucker. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. How's it going, ma'am? Hello. Hello. How is everyone? Hello. <laughs> How are you hey. today? I'm good. I'm good. I'm glad to be on the Locked Out Men show. All right. I That's appreciate you. I'm glad that you're here on the Locked Out Men podcast show. That's what's <laughs> up. That's what's up, yeah. man. So for everybody that don't know who you are, which they probably don't, go ahead and introduce yourself and let them know where you come from. All right. Well, I'm Red Duchess the Trucker, or my actual name is April. And I've been in trucking for about five years. Um, it was a hard road to get here, but I got here. Started off homeless back in 2013. And... Uh, gonna tell y'all a little story of how I got into trucking. Start off homeless, two kids, managed to get them into home so they wouldn't have to deal with uh what I was dealing with, which was sleeping in my car. And then eventually the car got repoed and it was oh. in and out of hotel. So um gonna shorten it up and say that eventually I got into Kansas and through the Kansas veterans program because I put myself into a shelter, homeless shelter even though I had family in town. So um, I wouldn't be a burden on them so I could get the programs I needed to get back on my feet. So I got through the veterans program and they got me um, into Section 8 on food stamps. And then I also went into go back into college full time, taking business um, management, I think it was, administration, something like that. Okay. And uh, after a couple of years, you know, starting to come back up and then I got hit up with the food stamp. They have a program through the unemployment office and they're like, you know, would you like to start another career? And one of the offers was a CDLA. Okay. And I was like, well, let's do this because obviously the career I had before wasn't working. So um, one time when I was like 13 and uncle, I have several uncles in trucking and cousins too. Mm -hmm. He rode up with his truck and that's how I've been interested ever since. So it's been in the back of my head since then, since a teenager. So I went ahead and uh, did what I had to do for them to give the okay. Got into the school and graduated and started trucking in May of 2015. Okay. So That's... it's been uh, five years now, and I couldn't be any happier. I actually right. love doing this. And I've always loved to travel. So. What's up, man? Yeah. That's what's up. Bye. Yeah. It sounds like you you had a you had a rough road, a bit of a rough road, man. And I, I want to say, I want to say before we continue on is that I you know look looking at your backstory and all like that, uh, you you salute to you. 
my my hats off to you and I salute you for 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 doing what you what you had to do to get to where you need right. to be, man. That's what's up. Thank so you. so back back up. You you was homeless. Um right. living out your car and all like that. How how right. was how was life uh what was life like back then? Well, um I had moved to Atlanta for a job promotion in the current career I was in and uh things just didn't fall into place. I was a single mom with two kids trying to make it in Atlanta and I found out real quick that uh there aren't enough programs <laughs> mm. for the the poor, the homeless, the downtrodden, whatever you want to put it, in Atlanta. And so when I started having problems, I had nowhere to go. Let, and it let, eventually let me, just, let me just stop. left us on the street. Let me let me stop you right quick. You 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 went mm-hmm. to Atlanta because of a of a promotion? What happened with the Correct. What, what happened what happened with the promotion? I mean, wasn't the company able to to, you know, able to get you into an apartment or or you know, or something like that? Oh no. No, they understood completely because Atlanta is very expensive. Y'all might hear a little bit of noise. I'm stepping out my truck. Okay. Um, and so the the only thing they could do was basically just keep on holding my job because I was late several times. There was times when I just couldn't show up. And, I mean, the list goes on and on. But my boss, you know, she stood by me. I think that went on for like six months. And there came a point where she couldn't fend off the bosses above her anymore. And so... Um, we had a heart to heart and she's like, I'd rather you be able to come back because if I have to fire you, you're not going to be able to. And I was like, I completely understand. And, uh, so then that's how I ended up jobless and homeless. So what was, so what was the field? If I, if I may ask, what, what was the field you was in for, for that six month period? Hold on just a sec. Mm-hmm. Thanks. Okay. Um, I was an eye technician, and that's someone who assists the ophthalmologist and the optometrist. Mm-hmm. So that person that, you know, when you go in to get your eyes checked and they're saying which one's better, one or two, or they're dropping eye drops in your eyes, that was me. Oh, okay. And um, I was working through the Department of Veterans Affairs, believe it or not. So it's not like I wasn't making, I wasn't making a lot of money, but I was making decent money. But just series of events. You know, just happened. Um, I'm sorry to hear when that. I, did that move to, I, I mean, because yeah. it sounded like the job that you had, you 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 was well, of course you was making money and all like that. But I'm I'm sorry to hear that you wasn't able to, you know, secure a home or or an apartment and all like that. Right. You know, I mean, right. you know, some. I actually had an apartment. I just couldn't keep it. I mean. And, uh, <laughs> Let me give a little bit of story. I had an ex-husband who wasn't really helpful. He was supposed to take the kids and didn't. So I ended up with kids when I couldn't afford them right at the moment. Wow. So and that you, was part of the deal with me moving to Atlanta and I got blown up. So so was you was you married at the time when uh, when you no. moved to Atlanta? Oh, okay, okay. No, okay, I've so. been a single mom for by then like 15 years. Okay, so your kids are still teenagers at this time, right? Uh, right. In your in your bio right here, you said you know yo you 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 sent your oldest off to live with her father, and you sent your youngest right to live with your to live with his his is it is it a he or she girl? Um, I have two daughters, yeah, okay, so, and I sent her to live with my mom. Okay, so you sent her to live with your yeah. with your grandmother. Was was that was that hard to do? Was that hard to let go? Um it was. It was cuz like I said, it was just it was just rough cuz at first when we started when we went into homelessness and didn't have nowhere to go, we started off with hotels. Eventually, they were able to go into the homes of their best friends. And then when I realized that this was just it, it was coming to an end is when I had to, we had to make the major decisions. So, um, so how, how my was, oldest, oh, go ahead, huh? go ahead, yeah. go ahead. <laughs> my, my, my oldest felt okay and safe to be able to live with her father. And I knew the stepmom, so I knew, you know, she'd take care of her. And, um, and then 
uh, my youngest, I sent to my mom in Kansas. So how how was the how was yep, the yep. converse how was the conversations with with your mother and and Ed's husband or baby's father? What what was the conversations to get them to uh, to take the children? Oh, me. There's no no love lost between me and my ex. So. <laughs> Uh, it was basically the conversation of now that, you know, when I needed you to really help so this would be avoided, now that it's here, you are going to help. I got And you. so you just didn't have a choice, so. Right, right. Um, what, what about the conversation with your mom? So how, how did that play out? Oh, they, that went okay. She was sad to hear what was going on. And, uh, and then so she went ahead. And I think, if I remember correctly, it's you know, it's kind of a blur now. I think she actually drove all the way out to Georgia to pick my daughter up and take her back. So okay, so and, do yeah. And I was just trying to figure out life. <laughs> so I know, I, I know, I know the pain, the the you know, being a single mother, you know, and 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 the struggles. You know, my yeah. mom's, my mom's. You know, she was a single mother struggling to take care of me at the time, and then my sister popped up in the. In the in in the scene, it was kind of you know she right. you know it was a struggle for her, but she she persevered. You know what I'm saying? Just right. like you, you you persevered. You know what I'm saying? You oh, you, yeah. you made yeah. ways you made ways for your children, right? So that you can so that you can get stronger to get to where you at right now. So right, you're still in ATL. Um, you're still in ATL. What I mean, what what were you doing uh, since? What, what, just odd jobs here and there? No, um, it was shortly after getting them off that I, um, I, I just let's be real, I can't legally say where I went. <laughs> I, I attempted a trucking company, but that didn't work out. And uh, But it was through them that I was able to land in Kansas. Oh, okay. Okay. So, so they, so they right. was able to get you up in kids. So where did you go to school for you? Well, you said that the, the veteran program put you, get put you to school. So yes. what was the school that you, that, that they put you through? It was, what a community college, it a was private a, school? No, it was just a, yeah, it was a local private school. And for, at that time, it was the only like, people in that city um, of Topeka, Kansas that was offering a CDL class. Okay. Um, I think there's two or three others now, but yeah, so it was the only one and I went through there and their program was great because it was six weeks long. And then if you needed longer, it was no problem. Oh, yours was six um, weeks than, than the traditional three oh, yeah. weeks. So they, right. so did they, did they, did they, did they, tra did they train you not just for your license, but they trained you for life on the truck? Um, it wasn't so much about life on the truck, but, uh, not directly, like there wasn't like a class, part of the class, and here, here's what's going on. Uh, it was the fact that the instructors were also um, truckers. So it was just listening and hearing their stories as they told them as we went through the class and was joking around and whatnot, um, that you actually got a feel for what was, what could possibly be going on. Um, there's still a lot that became a surprise to me when I got out here, of course, but I do believe that school made me way more prepared than most schools out here. So okay, shout out to that school yeah. right there. Shout out to that yeah, school yeah. because a lot of these, uh, a lot of these, especially with trucking companies and a lot of these uh, community colleges, they they only get you ready for right. for for your for the test. That's about it. Nothing right. else. That's you it. Know, every everything yep. else. Once you get on the truck, you 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 learn by doing. You learn by doing. Right. So. Um, so of course, uh, three months, uh, during that, during that time of you going to school and, you know, being on a food stamp program and, and now that you got a house and all like that, um, right. were, were you, were you working, were, were you working odd jobs while you was in school or you just, you just concentrated on the school? I concentrated on the school and I did a lot of volunteering uh, here and there. I've always done that my, my whole life, um, especially with my kids, because I wanted them to see that just because you're down and you don't got a job, there's always something you can be doing for somebody else. And um, so I did a lot of volunteering in between, but I was just doing the school full time 
which through the voc rehab, they actually pay for your school and then give you a, a stipend or whatever in order to live. Okay. So, okay. Yeah. so, so, uh, so you, that worked out. So you graduated, uh, you graduated from school, uh, 2015. What, what was the first trucking company you, you went with? Oh my gosh. That was a uh, PTL. PTL. <laughs> what what, could, what yeah. was your experience with uh, PTL? Um, not to talk bad about the people there. The people there were all right. It was just the school and the way it was ran. Uh, I did good with two weeks on the truck with my trainer. Mm -hmm. Uh, she was awesome. And, um, but then after that, you end up teaming with another student for however many miles until you get those miles done. And if that student goes home and you don't go home, then you get another student. So <laughs> Wait. in the course of the three months, I went from two-week training to three different students to eventually realizing I was never going to get done. And I called U.S. Express, and then that's how I ended up over there. So. Okay, so wait, 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 wait. Well, PTL, they, they, they putting the blind with the blind? That, that's how they doing it yes. over there? Yes, yes. You know, we got to do an expose. I don't know if they're we, we doing that do, now. I got to say we, that. <laughs> we got to do an expose episode uh, about PTL, man, that they that they put in the blind with the blind. I, I wouldn't I don't think I would have been I don't think I would have been king with that. I, I don't want to be I don't want to no. be on a I don't want to be on a I don't want to be on a truck with uh with another with another green one, I guess. Right, right. Right, and uh, that's true. Um, what's what happened was, is I guess because I have like a, a mother hen type to me or whatever, mm -hmm. and I'm also a quick learner. I ended up uh, not that I didn't learn from them, but you know, I had a couple of them where I was teaching them more. They were teaching me, but you know, uh, we all of us, as far as I know, got through it and moved on. So. So, uh, so some people so, stayed at PTL, some moved on. So I guess PTL wasn't, was, wasn't as good. How, how long did you, well, it, it must've been a short stay if you went through four different, uh, co-drivers. Yeah. Um, it was about three months long. Um, when I called us express about two months in, they said between my school and the two months I had, they were going to need at least another month. So I went back. <laughs> right. I called him on a home time thinking I was going to be able to just keep rolling. But uh, so I went back and got another month in and then they took me on. So. So with uh, so with that jump, you went over to U.S. Express. What, what was the experience yeah. over there? Um, Like I've been telling people that uh, talk about going there after school and everything. I was, you will definitely learn how to be a truck driver. Because they... <laughs> It puts you through some stuff, and uh, <laughs> you'll definitely learn how you need to get together with your dispatchers and people above them if need be. You'll learn how to get into tight spots for real. I mean, some of that stuff was just crazy, but I learned real quick in the two years how to be a fairly good, I believe, truck driver. So. All right, so you rocked out with uh, U.S. Yeah. Express for two years, huh? Yeah, yeah. I ended up about six months in getting a dispatcher that was really awesome. Um, I have a grandson that was born while I was there, and he was born Michael Premi with cerebral palsy. And, uh -huh. you know, so he's still currently hooked up to a trach and breathing and feeding tube and stuff like that, but he's doing fine. Um, they didn't expect him to come this far four years in. But Did with U.S. Express, that new dispatcher had uh, – twins that were michael Premi. so when he found out about my grandson we really connected had at that something, point y'all had something in common was right. he able was he able to get you to get you down to down there to see you to meet your right. grandson yes yep and anytime something came up and he was not doing well he got me straight there to atlanta so okay okay um that, that was he, he, he still goes down to my books as the best dispatcher ever and he knows this so <laughs> okay. we've kept in touch over the years yeah. Okay, that's what's up. That's what's up. All right, so two years. Uh, you 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 figured two years was enough with uh with U.S. Express. I mean, if it was a good if it was a good um experience over there, why why'd you leave? 
Oh, I left because my um, that good dispatcher decided to go ahead and be a planner. Uh, oh, <laughs> I kid okay. him still about it, but it, it was more money for him and his family, you know. So right. although it left me hanging, but so then the next dispatcher, it just didn't go well. It right sound, right, right off the bat, so sound, I immediately put in my two weeks. Sound sound like my situation over at J and R Frugal. I had a had an awesome fleet manager, and you know he decided to leave. For greener prep, for greener pastures, and right. um, and the female, uh, the female dispatcher they had was just was just awful, 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 wow. awful. So right. so trucking, so trucking, so trucking in general, in 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 the beginning, got you, you know, got you out of your got you out of your pre- your past situation. Right, it did. Okay. Okay. Uh, how did your how did your kids feel about you you know being the truck driver? Um, they thought it was great, and uh, with at that time, you know, I had one kid in Kansas and one kid in Georgia, so it allowed me to be able to visit both of them. Of course, um, they wished they had more time with me because you know what kid doesn't, but you know, other than that, it's great. Oh, and okay. then I was able to come up financially enough to where I was able to start help them to do the things that they need or, you know, I took care of their needs, but the things that they uh, wanted to do. So. Okay. Okay. Um, yep. All right. So the veteran, so is the veteran program still in effect for, for people that may need it? Man, um, the things I saw working for the department of veterans affairs and then my own situation, mm-hmm. I, I can't say if it's there or not. It's just, at this point, it depends on what state and what region you're in, according to their regions for Department of Veterans Affairs. Um, I did actually try the Veterans Homeless Program in Atlanta and got, and that was before I actually lost my job, but because I wasn't completely homeless at that point, mm-hmm. they wouldn't help me. Mm-hmm. So um, that's how that goes. You know, it's like hit or miss around the country as to whether a veteran actually gets the help they need. So, so you, so... So you are a veteran. So you 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 did a stint in a in the service. Yes, I was in for three years as a high tech. <laughs> That's why I've I've been in that field. Um, had been in that field for almost twenty, fifteen years, something oh like that. Oh my God, Red! I man, I, salute to you for for your service, man. Why why what? Why, why wasn't why why wasn't Veteran Affairs couldn't couldn't get you situated? I I would assume um, that you 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 wouldn't be at home. Right, you, you're a veteran. They they should have they should have reached out to right. you and and did a little bit more. Right? right, and you're right, and that's where the system is broke. The system is just broke, and um and it's not broke financially. It's just broke as far as how and when and where they help people. So. Uh, the saddest part was, is it literally, the program itself literally says for homeless and to prevent homelessness. And when I came to them to try to prevent it, I didn't get anything. So, um, I mean, you, I, I mean, don't know what you, to say you gave point. your, you, you, you get, well, you, you joined the service. How old was you when you joined the service and what branch was it? I, I ended up, um, joining the army and, um, of course I was an eye tech and, uh, I wasn't in any wars or anything like that. I was actually in between, ooh, I know it was Desert Storm. Now I forgot what the next one was as I was getting out. But um, I got out at the time uh, because I was married and we were fixing to have kids and stuff. So, Wait, was, I mean, you could have, could you, could you stayed in regardless if you was, if you was pregnant? I mean, because I'm sure if you um, stayed in, they would have, you know they, right? Why? Why is it? Oh my God! I, I get. I, I got so many <laughs> questions in my head, man. Why? Why is it that they took care of you while you was there, but then turned their back on you when when you was out? That that is a question that a lot of veterans across this country ask that on a daily basis. So I cannot answer that. And but I I got to reiterate the fact that that was only Atlanta and or Georgia system. Because it was Kansas system that did pick me up, but of course by the time I got to Kansas, I was literally jobless and homeless, and 
that kind of thing. But yeah, you, um, was, you was almost at rock bottom. I'm I'm still I I'm was still at rock shocked. Bottom, yeah, I, I am still shocked that 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 the system don't work for our veterans. I I, I right. see so many homeless veterans out here. It is crazy. Like you know, right. I, I talked to the one gentleman. You know, he asked me. You know, asked me for some change, and he told me that he was in. You know, he was in. He was he he served in the service, you know, doing doing a couple of wars. He came home and that was it. It was like it was like he ain't come home to no parade. He ain't come home to no standing ovation, no nothing. And and when he got home, they they just cut him off. And now now right. he's living on the streets like, you know, and and you, you know. Oh man, I, that's that's just sad. I mean, you know, like I said, you know, I see they they come on TV all the time. They come up to the schools all the time. Hey, you know, join the service. The service could do this, that, and the third for you. Yada yada yada. Right. But then when you get out of the, when you leave after four years, eight years, or something like that, if you don't retire, because look like that's 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 the only thing that they're gonna do for you if if you retire. Because right. now, if if you're out in four years, the only thing that you have is the medical, right? You, you they they don't give you nothing else, right? Okay, but right, and then what happens is is people, uh, being that I worked at Department of Veterans Affairs, I have found out, even just for myself, that a lot of people think that there is a connection between the government, which is the military and the government which runs the Department of Veterans Affairs. Uh, there really isn't much connection other than they may briefly, as you're exiting, say, hey, here you go. You know, this is what's over there. Um, so I've, I've used, whenever I see a veteran or I know that it's a veteran, you know, I tell them about the VA system and have you checked into it. Because if you come out of the military with a um, disability, it doesn't mean that you automatically are under Department of Veterans Affairs as a disability. So you still need to check with them and get that all on board for your transition into being a, um, a veteran. And uh, a lot of military people, at least in the past, like from when I came out, we just didn't know. I was filling out paperwork for disability through the VA system and had no clue about them or why I was doing this. And unfortunately, they lost my record, so I couldn't backdate nothing to when they should have picked me up <laughs> under being a service-connected uh, disabled veteran. So wow. it's just a matter of getting the word out. Wow. Yeah. All right. So, so now that you, uh, now that you uh, transitioned into trucking, trucking afforded right. you a, a, a lot better life now, right? Well, I'm very family oriented. And, um, so it, it led, I wouldn't say, well, it's better than being homeless. Uh, but I wouldn't say it's better than maybe where I could have gone if I managed to stay in the previous career. But, um, what this does is it allows me to travel, which I love to do. And it allows me to go see all my family members whenever and wherever throughout the year, because all I got to do is ask for home time over there, you know? So uh, to me, that's the greatest because now I don't have to worry about how I'm going to afford to go see the family. And um, that's my biggest thing. All right. So Red, about being man. in this job. So Red, you, uh, so of course you, you, you company drive for a while. Uh, it says here that right. uh, says here that you was uh lease ops. Um, you when I yeah. when I met up with you when I met up with you back in the day you you was you was leasing on with uh with Parts Motor Group, right? What was the um, what, what was well, the what was the experience with uh with Loshan Parts Company? Okay, now I wasn't leased with him at that time. Uh, um, he okay. was it was him and his trucks that were leased on the Prime. Okay, so I actually was still a company driver working for him. Oh, okay. and um. Yeah, and he had just started uh, just about when I came and got on board. And my whole thing is is I believed in what he was doing and what he uh, was trying to do and accomplish. And and I still say to this day, it's a, it's a wonderful thing when you see the younger people, especially the younger men, standing up and doing something, you know. 
And so that's that was my thing is I'm standing behind him. I'm going to come over here and I'm going to help him out. You know, of course, at the same time, you know, I'm getting a paycheck and everything. But to me, that was still showing support. And um, so I went ahead and did that. And I, it was great. Um, how, how just long, like with how, any. How long you stayed on with him? And actually, how did you how did you find out that he was, you know, looking for drivers? You you came across his YouTube. Oh, he, he put right. Up, he put, no, I was on the uh, his his uh, group on Facebook called oh. YTTA. Oh, OK. Yeah. Oh, and so, Y-T-T-A? Um, <laughs> right. Yeah. Uh, you know, and that's how I got started as Red Duchess. So, okay. you know, much, much, much props to that group. Um, but yeah, so through that, uh, group and everything got, you know, was following him, seeing what he was doing. And mm-hmm. he happened to talk about, you know, he was hiring drivers and stuff. So I went ahead and got in touch with him and, and uh, that went well um, with him. I didn't have any problems with, of course, with a new company, you're going to have your ups and downs because, you know, it's a new company. It's brand new. But um, and then he was leased on to Prime. And for the most part, I'd have to say I didn't have too much trouble with Prime. But as, again, it comes down to dispatchers, no matter what you do out here. So <laughs> so was was you know, he so, was he uh, dispatching his own I mean was he dispatching the loads to you guys or no, or he no, had somebody else to do it? Yeah, not at that time. He was just leased on the prime and prime was the one that was dispatching. Oh now, that prime mean was he dispatching. Wasn't aware. Yeah. He was made aware he knew when and where we were going and stuff. It was just prime that was dispatching. Whoa. So. Okay. So he was so he was quote unquote leased on with Prime. But mm-hmm. he so he so prime dispatchers, you you dealt with you dealt with prime dispatchers. So if any if anything right. like monetary issues or anything like that, you had to deal with him, right? Yeah, as far as my paycheck, it was with uh Mark's Proto Group, oh, Mora okay. Group. <laughs> but yeah, as far as the, the loads themselves and where I was going and how to get there and all that came back on to Prime. So what was the experience with that? I mean, you know, you you being a comp you 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 being a company driver for one yeah. guy, but then I guess kind of taking orders from from another. How yeah how did that uh, how did that work out? Well, I mean, I treated it like I did in the military. You know, you have your immediate supervisor who really knows what's going on, and so you stick with them and what they're saying which was low Sean, <laughs> right, right. you know what I'm saying? And then when the bigger people prime, you know, you start having issues with them, you know, if you couldn't work it out, you went over to your supervisor. So, okay. Um, that's just how that went down. Okay. Yeah. Okay. How, how long, how long was it when you stayed with, uh, with parts motor group? Um, he knew when I came to him that I was looking into going lease. So mm-hmm. I stayed for six months and then that's when I gave myself, a year's time frame to go out and lease and try different leases if I needed to. And so for that next year, I went through four different leases and, uh, none of them panned out. So I ended up back company driver. Back, back then, how, what was the experience leasing? You, you, you was in the mid, you wanted to buy a truck yeah. or you, you, you wanted to buy a truck or you or you was just leased on to uh just to rent their truck what was what was the vibe well there? right now my goal when I came out here was to get to the point where I own a truck and it's you know I'm just running a one truck thing or whatever but um um I lost my chance off for a minute. Okay, so what I did with the first one, it was just to try my hand at leasing just to see if I could handle, because it comes with more responsibility. Um, You don't have the full responsibility of being an independent owner-op, but um, you do, you are owner-op. So then I went to that one for the experience to see if I could hang. Mm -hmm. Um, I did find that I could do pretty well, but of course the first company just wasn't working out. So then I went on to the second one and so on and so forth. Um, for one thing I've realized is that finding a le- good lease is just like finding a good company. So some people started trying to tell me I was hopping too much with the leasing. And I'm like, but it's the same thing as a company. You're going to keep moving 
until you find one that works for you. And the same thing with lease. Like, you can go to a lease, and it, it may be working out one way, but it's not working out the other. Whatever it is, you still got to be able to make money, which is the same concept as being company. So, um, which I guess is where some people get the whole glorified company driver <laughs> yeah, <laughs> for being a lease op. That's so, what they got. That's what they get yeah. that term from because basically you still right. tied to that particular company. You know their rules, right. regulations, and all like that. Right. You know you, yeah. you can't and, you can't operate the truck the way you want to the way you really want to operate it except for right, that you right. can turn around and say oh well yeah i paid this a month for my for my truck payment and this that and the third but you you, you can't book your own loads you can't you can't take right. the truck somewhere else you know you're you're right. tied to that company you're tied down to that company so uh right. So yeah, so I guess uh, glorified company driver will be the 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 safe word here. It's like they, it's like <laughs> old schoolers give us give us new school the the steering wheel holder. You know, just saying. Right. Um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so you so you, you you went through several leases. You felt what was the common denominator in all, in all of those in all of those leases that you tried to that you tried to the work well see i come from wanting to do otr and so my biggest thing i found uh in all of them was the ones that were m were making steady money i guess you could say better than otr were the ones who were doing more of like a regional run or mm -hmm. dedicated run mm -hmm. and for me that just irritated the ever loving whatever out of me because <laughs> I'm determined, bound and determined to find a way where being true OTR is profitable. Um, but that's the common denominator I found in all of them. Uh, there was either the conflict of they didn't go west of I-35 and then that cut off too much of my family or, um, or they were just staying within certain states and it just, it just became a mess. Now, on the positive side, though, you do learn – about how to run a business. If you're doing, keeping track of everything like you're supposed to, you're going to learn something from those. Um, and that's what you, know, you, you did. Learning. You, you learned from, yeah, you yeah. Learned from all you that. You learn on how to do fuel, right. You learn how to do fuel. You learn what your cost is to run the truck. I mean, all of that. You do learn from that to do that. All right. So, but you, 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 yeah. you decided to go back company. Right. Right, because I gave myself a year. That's just how I am. I won't. I'll come out and try something, but I'll give myself a time frame so I don't fall under, you know, okay. too badly. I didn't want to get out here and then be losing my house and all that like some, unfortunately, some drivers have. And uh, so I gave myself a year, and the year didn't pan out anything. So I was like, I'm going to go back company and regroup and uh, figure it out, at, you know, after about a year of being company again. So. So how do you feel about so you so you're a woman, you know, female, you you've been trucking right. for 5 years and all like that. You you pretty you know, you pretty much learned close to to the ins and outs about uh about the trucking field and the trucking industry and all like that. How do you feel right. how, how do you feel about uh you know, negativity towards the women in in trucking right now? Like, you know, do you feel that there's any any negativity towards women or do you feel that women uh women could do just as the same as the man out here have you experienced any negativity out here um actually i have and it was towards the beginning when i came out here i guess because i was actually you know being new and everything i was taking everything in so mm -hmm. that also meant all the negativity whereas now you know, I really couldn't tell you if there's negativity because at some point, I guess my brain just shuts it off and keep it moving. But, <laughs> but uh, there, there is some out here, and I've had these conversations with some of the working or uh, women um, trucking groups I'm involved in on Facebook. There's some women who swear that they don't see none of that, where we get treated differently or called names or whatever. And um, but there are some of us who do see it, and. Sometimes you see it too often, and sometimes you don't really see it much. But it's, it's like hit or miss at this point. Um, 
my advice is is just to get out here, drive the truck, and and do the best. And okay. then you know they got a problem after that, then that's on them. Okay, that's okay. the way I feel about it. So what yeah. do you feel? Do you do you feel that uh do you feel the industry as a whole, uh for women has 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 accepted you guys yet? Um, as a whole, no. Um, the the trucks that a lot of people want to call the steering wheel holder trucks, whatever. Uh, mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. You know, they've come a long way as far as ergonomics or whatever and storage and stuff like that. And, you know, unfortunately, we're women, so we come with these extras sometimes. And um, I think there are some changes that still could be made to these trucks uh, that, to me, would help everyone across the board, male or female. But um, as far as the industry itself, I really can't say because I haven't... I've been just in dry van and reefer, and mm-hmm. so I don't see, as far as doing that particular type of job, I don't see a giant uh, disparity of or differences or whatever between men and women, other than the fact that I have left companies because, um, in particular, a friend of mine, he was there at the same time I was. Mm-hmm. And he was getting all these loads and everything. But let me call to try to figure out why I'm not moving. And it's, uh, and that's all I got. Uh, and I kept getting that throughout the whole six months. And that's why I left. Um, so those type of things, they're still the good old boy attitude. And, um, you know, the, the only thing you can do, like I did, was just get up and leave and move on to something else. So Red Duchess, man, I, I got I, I got to give you a bomb shot for, for your life, man, because, you know, you the epitome of coming from nothing to something, man. What is the most important right. thing? What is the most important thing throughout your lifetime that you that that you have learned? Oh man, um, you know, I don't think I touched on that, but my ex husband was abusive. So from coming out of that and then coming out of this, the 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 thing that's the common theme of my life is you just don't give up. You keep moving. You get knocked down get up, brush yourself, give you the time you need to cry it out, whatever, and then just keep it moving. Just keep it moving. That's all I can say. Keep you know what I'm saying? Moving. Regroup, replan. You know what I'm saying? Don't lose sight of your goals and your dreams and keep it moving. I got you. I got you. Out here in this yeah. trucking, out here in this trucking field, uh, uh, Red Duchess, man, what was the best, what, what was the best compliment that you ever received out here? Wow. Um, to to me, it's it's simple. It's just when I have a, a I've had men watch me park into a space. Uh, in particular, there was this one space that I saw two different trucks try to get into, and then when I came pulled up and I got right into it, you know, I saw a guy two or three trucks over got out of his truck and purposely walked up to my truck and was like, "Man, you know." <laughs> I had to give you an applause for that one. He couldn't, uh, yeah, nobody yeah. else couldn't do that but you. That was up, man. Right. That was up. Right. You know, so these guys <laughs> that have walked that that a five foot nothing woman could do it just as better as just as better as a six foot man. You know what I'm saying? Right. Well, Red Duchess, right. man. Yo, I I appreciate you taking the time coming on, chopping it up with me a little bit. Uh, me and Red Duchess, we we met back. Uh, met back a while back i'll say about a couple of years we i think it was right. in illinois that we that we met each other in the in the truck stop and took a quick picture with yeah, each other was that a Petro? Uh, yeah um I, I met her in the uh in the in the zello group uh do you still partake in uh in in, the, in any of the zello groups I know they're they're not no. yeah I, I know they're not uh yeah yeah they're not up no more but but do you right. do you partake is it, uh, any in any in Zello groups or anything like that? No, I think maybe about six months ago. I think I tried, but uh, I think some of them I got booted out. I don't know. Some of them shut down. It just it's just not the same. So I just stopped <laughs> trying to go back in. <laughs> I agree. I agree. I agree. Yeah. Well, Red Duchess, the trucker. <laughs> thank you very much for coming on and uh, chopping it up with me. Um, yeah, thank you. Do you have any do you, do you have any advice 
for you know for females that's that's interested in getting into this industry uh that's that's interested in getting into the truck what what kind of advice you can uh you can give them um well if you're starting off try to do as much research as you can on the school you're about to go to if it's not <clears throat> excuse me if it's not connected to a, a company do your research because not all these schools out here teach you what you need to know. Um, the other thing I would suggest is get on Facebook, hunt down some of these um, trucking groups that are women. Um, we got women in trucking. We got she trucking. I have my own group, Red Duchess, the trucker. Um, and search us out and, you know, ask your questions. And for the most part, they, they do get answered. You know, we are women. So, Sometimes some stuff go on, but, you know, <laughs> ask questions. You know, you know? It, it's like every female that I talk to, you know, every female that I talk to, they, they, you guys got the, the common denominator in, in majority of the conversation is she trucking. Shout out to Sheree, right. to Sheree Moore, man. She, she got a right, phenomenal, right. she got a phenomenal group over there. Uh, she trucking. Definitely yeah. look her up on, uh, on Facebook, you know what I'm saying? So, you know, I got to reach out to her. I got I, I to gotta, I gotta reach out to her. You know what I'm saying? All right, yeah, guys. Cool. Well, that is it. You know what I'm saying? Uh, again, April, Red Duchess the Trucker. Where, where can they find you at? I'm on YouTube, Facebook, and Instagram. All right. Now, do I? Uh, let me see. I, I think I got you. Am I? Am I following you on Instagram? Yeah. Oh, okay. Then I yeah, I so. guess. I guess. <laughs> I guess I am. I guess I am. So, Red Duchess yeah. the Trucker on Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube. Definitely check her right. out. If you guys want to come on and chop it up with me, you know, you could do that. You can do that. Hit me up at the Lockout Men Podcast at gmail.com. You can text me 216-600-2090. Or you can come over to Instagram, hit me up over there, and you know, we can we can get in and chop it up. You know what I'm saying? Uh again, I like to appreciate Red Duchess and Trucker to come on and chopping it up with me. Uh, if you guys like content like this and more, don't forget to hit the like, subscribe, comment, share, and hit that bell for more content like this. I talk to beautiful, I talk to beautiful truckers all the time. I appreciate all of them, the ones that came on and the ones that I got coming on. I appreciate all of them coming in, having a sit-down conversation with me. No drama, no bullshit. That's what it is. That's what it is. I am your humble host, Lockout Men, and that is Red Duchess the Trucker. And on that note, we are out of here. Right, Red Duchess. Awesome, <laughs> awesome, 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 yeah. awesome. Yo, I I didn't realize your 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 life was like that, man. I wow. I mean, I yeah. I, I, I I did not realize the struggle that that you had back in the day. I mean, you really yeah. you 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 really persevered. I mean, if people if if people wants to you know, use uh, what, what can I say? Use somebody as an inspiration of hope. You're that person. Thanks. You you are that person, man. I mean, you came up out of a out of a abusive relationship. You 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 faced homelessness. Right. And uh but you 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 kept it going. You you kept it going, man. I Right. <laughs> man, you, you kept it going. So All right. Well, you stay beautiful, man. Uh you stay you stay beautiful, you stay blessed and um and uh 
definitely if you want to come back on and chop it up with me or something like that or you know you want to come on truckers talk live with me and all like that let me know we'll you know we got some topics we'll chop it up you know what i'm saying okay cool cool all right all right well you yeah. stay safe out there and i'll talk to you later all right you too be blessed all right peace all right all right